You watching MBC. Good morning. Welcome this morning to another 15 minute devotion with John Daniel. It's a joy having you this morning. I thank God for all those who meet me in town and tell me all the testimonies from all over the all over America, Europe, Caribbean, how the word of God really making a change in their lives. And that's what I, I I'm happy to hear that. This morning, before we start, we want to say I thankful to God for the funeral service of Bufam Jean. He lived an honorable life and he has buried an honorable funeral service yesterday. I thank God this morning. Let's pray that we can prepare our hearts to receive the word of God this morning. Father, I pray this morning, search me, O God, and know my heart to thee. Try me, O Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be some wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. This morning, I want to share a little on moving on. Because Bofam's mother, she clearly said that she doesn't want her son's death to be um, sensationalized. Don't make a sensation out of it. Don't make a show out of it. She doesn't want it to be politicized. Don't make politics out of it. And not commercialized. Don't make t-shirts and key rings of Bofam and cups to sell to make money. So let us respect the wishes of the parents this morning of Bufam Jean. This morning, my topic is moving on. And I must say out of gratitude to thank God for every bad thing that happens to you as a believer, a Christian. God things for good. Sunday, I got a broken finger while playing a veteran's football match for Lancers at the VG Field on Sunday morning. But I say, what good could come out of evil? You know what came out of that? God had four, as the God prepared, four angels at Victoria Hospital to wait for me. And these doctors and nurses were so nice. I said like they, they were heavenly. Thank, thank you publicly to Dr. Louison, Dr. Henry, Nurse Popo, Nurse Antoine. Remarkable how heart caring attention I received at the hospital for my broken finger. Good morning also to Mr. Aibo and Miss Davia, always logged on to NBC. Paul Dublin family, good morning. Bernard of Lacomingo, good morning to you. God bless you. This morning, we want to move on. Move on from this chapter. We are moving on from the fight for Bofam justice, you know. We are going to rally for justice for Bofam until we are justice. But we're moving on to the next chapter. Okay? And they are saying Black Lives Matter. I have a problem with that saying. As though, as though they are white people, they are Asians, they are brown, and they are blacks. As though blacks are a, a second thought. Black lives doesn't only matter. Black lives are original lives. And I dare to say, I'm not being racist this morning. I dare to say that blacks don't only matter, but blacks are the first. All life came from black people. The cradle of civilization is in Africa. Life started in Africa. So we say, but John, a prayer devotion, you give me history. Hello. The Bible says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. If you have come to pray, pray, pray without understanding, without knowledge, you pray without understanding. So this morning, I'm going to teach you a little. Then you can pray with understanding and sense. Racism. I mean, I reached a point where I was fed up with the racism thing. People killing black people as black people don't, don't matter. Racism. You have to be careful. Because if you don't want racism from a spiritual point of view, I and you will end up hating white people. And if we say we are Christians, we cannot move in the natural. In the natural, we will be tempted to hate white people. To hate Amber Geiger. Yes, I'm being honest. In my human self. But racism is primarily a spiritual thing. And I will explain why to you. Racism, don't tell me you hate me because I am black skinned because I'm dark, because I'm melanated. You know, white people hate black people so much because we're dark. No, there's more to racism. And we're going to watch the bigger picture. Racism is out of people hate what they fear. We are feared by the white people because of our history, our whole history. Black people were the originals. Everything came from black. Even in co all colors came from black. We brought science to the world, mathematics to the world, the pyramids will be by black people, Africans who build a pyramid up to now. It's a, a mystery how the pyramids were built. We brought art, music to the world. 
So we are feared. But not only that, racism has a spiritual connotation. Racism is of the devil. The devil is the engineer behind racism. He's the, 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 he's the force behind racism. He's only using the white race as his tools, his puppets to, 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 de to depress and oppress the, the black people. But so now I tell you, you must understand racism from a spiritual point of view. So it'll be easier for you to forgive them. If not, you will hate them and you won't go to the violence. But this morning, racism is a spiritual warfare, spiritual wicked high places. So you know that the white man is not your chief enemy, but the devil is your enemy using the white man to suppress and to oppress black people. Now I say, John Daniel, why you say racism is spiritual? It is because you must know that the devil is the enemy of mankind, right? He's the enemy of mankind. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, they sold the human race to the devil, basically. They sold the human race to the devil. Adam and Eve sold out their whole generation descendants to the devil when they sinned in the Garden of Eden. So Satan had control of mankind. Now, when somebody defeats you, you hit them. Who defeated Satan? Who came down? Yahweh came down in the flesh. Yeshua Christ manifest in the flesh to do what? To die on the cross. To redeem us. To buy us back from Satan. And Yeshua, when he rose from the grave, he defeated Satan openly. He made an open show of the devil. He made a puppy show of the devil. Because what? You crucify me. You bury me. And I and Christ said, before he died, I will rise in three days. That's a God I can bow to. If a man tell me, before I kill him, you kill him, but I'll rise in three days. And the man rise in three days. That means the man made an open show of the devil. So the devil is angry that Christ came and died. And he redeemed black people, white people, all races from the sin, from the devil's grip. So now you, white can be saved, black can be saved, yellow can be saved. And Amber Geiger this morning, if you repent of your sins, you confess your sins, don't come to your lies. Unless there is truth, they can't, and confession, there can't be forgiveness. If you come with truth, with confession of what happened, and you confess to God your sin, and you repent of your sin, you can be saved. That's why Christ died. So why is the devil angry against the black race? Why is he so angry? You know why? Because Christ came in the flesh. He was God, Yahshua, Yahweh in spirit. He came in the body. And he came for a race. And which race he came from? The North African race. Israel is North Africa. Last time I heard it, FIFA football now, they say Israel is in the European group. Israel has never been European. Israel is not European. Check your geography, check your history. Israel is North African. Christ came through the line of North African race. Jesus Christ came through the black race. And I say that boldly. Do your history, do your research. So if uh, you come for the black race, it's through you, through a black womb. That Christ, my enemy, come, come to, and he, 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 he deliver humanity. For we come for the, the, the black race. So the devil has a special anger against the black race, and that's it. And on that day, I can speak more about that. Good time, I can't speak about that. So racism, the white supremacists, and the racists, and the Ku Klux Klan, you are being used by the devil. The devil doesn't like you. He's using you to oppress black people because he's angry that. Is Christ come to the black race as a baby in a manger and he died and delivered the whole world? That's why there's racism. But we can't see that another day. Do you know slavery was so bad? Slavery was so terrible. Slavery was wicked, past wicked going. That, 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 that the, the white planters would not only beat the slaves, they brought their children like animals. They, they destroy their, their physical and their soul. They crush the psyche of the slaves. You know, in a society of slavery plantations, anytime a young black male was rising up as a leader, strong, you know what they would do? The white men would tie in front of the whole plantation, children, his wife, everybody, and they would perform homosexual acts upon him. Why? Just to degrade him. So the slaves were like animals. That is cruelty of the highest order by, by Satan himself. Right? And we're moving on. So spiritually, we see that racism is, is of the devil is spiritual. That's why now as a Christian, you, 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 you can forgive because God said that revenge is his. If you are a Christian, you see, the difference between a Christian and religion, big, big difference. 
religion you do you clap your hands you sing you shout you do what you want but when you are christian you surrender your will to god in your own self you say for me alone god that amber gang like a woman i'll bring her to swim in the stuff of spring and we lucians you know which part we do we drop her but you say no i have to obey god you're you the old man when you, i said last week before you get saved the old man the old flesh telling you to hit amber geiger stone amber geiger bring the silver spring and tie her and drop her in the hot silver spring but a new man christ telling you no no forgive love revenge is mine that's why as a christian we must submit to god's way amen christianity is surrender of the soul and the heart and the will to god because for me that's why sometimes we waste time to call you a hypocrite you want to argue somebody you're not a hypocrite god knows every heart and you know your heart the hypocrite knows his heart because if you are a hypocrite today you cannot even want to forgive amber geiger but because your soul is surrendered to god you're not perfect but you say god i'm a christian i give up my my, my will i give up my gun i give up my, my my evil ways i give up my my own hatred because you tell me to love amber geiger i must say it's not easy to forgive and it's impossible to forgive sometimes it's impossible to love your enemy in your own strength you can't love somebody that shoot your brother shoot your son in your own strength it's impossible only the spirit of god in your soul that can make you forgive amber geiger and to love amber geiger and this morning amber geiger god asked me to forgive you to love you and i'm saying god said in matthew 5 44 love your enemies bless them and curse you and to go to them who despitefully use you this morning i'm a guy i have no choice my old man tell me to hate you hate you christ tell me to love you i have to bow and obey christ my master forgive them praise god you know you may be a christian yes when people hurt you in the family it's still hard because we're not perfect it's only human i said out of that, that finger bad my finger was broken good came on a, a broken finger i'll tell you why when i went home guys you can put gabriel picture on, 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 on the tv for them if you want when i went home with my broken finger my son the, the older one michael said daddy come to you your finger break your so sad football and then the okay great thanks and the younger one gabriel only three years old gabriel my children very close to me gabriel so sad said, daddy Gabriel sad and that touched me. Eh? And I said, Gabriel face chill. Gabriel get vexed. Daddy, why made you do that? Yes, what happened? Eh? Daddy, why made you do that? Daddy, it's my fault. And Gabriel, I was so shocked. Gabriel told me, Daddy, I give me a hard slap in his face. I said, Gabriel. No, I was shocked. I swear to God. First time I Gabriel talked like that. I never met you and talk like that before. I never met you and I slap him in the face. Oh, neither Michael Gabriel. I said, Gabriel, where did I talk from? Now, sometimes God speaks to us for a donkey, for children. I said, Gabriel, you must not say that. The man did not bring my finger. He kicked the ball hard and my, my finger got broken. He said, Daddy, why did he kick it too hard? And Gabriel face well screw. I said, Gabriel is about John. But then God spoke to me right through Gabriel. God said, But John, the same way, you want to slap Amber Geiger. You, you, you hate her. And if you have a chance on Friday, when the homecoming, if you saw Amber Geiger, you stole Amber Geiger. And I'm your heavenly father, John Daniel. Boy, have you ever heard me say I'll slap anybody? I say, yes, Lord. God took me right through Gabriel. What did I command you, John Daniel? And everybody that's in the show who hurting. I command you to forgive. I command you to love her. I say, yes, Lord. And I felt so humbled by that experience. I say, God, thank you. For speaking to me for Gabriel. And in closing, we have two more minutes. I want to go to Second Samuel chapter 12 this morning. Amber Geiger this morning. This one's for you. This is Amber Geiger, Geiger segment this morning. In Second Samuel chapter 12, God sent the prophet Nathan. Now I'm, I'm not a prophet, I'm just a nobody preaching God's word. To David. Sometimes when you do our evil, Amber Geiger, even though you lie and you walk free. And you think you have it well god watching you know god is the god of justice sometimes we do evil and nobody knows so we escape we get it good we pain ourselves 
You know David murdered Uriah for his wife? He saw Bathsheba bathing. Ooh, a nice, attractive woman. David sent to take her as king. He went to Bedifer. He had sex with the man's wife while he was the man was at, in war for Israel, fighting for David's army, you know. When she told him she, she's pregnant, David realized she's pregnant, he's in trouble. He sent to call her husband to send him home to sleep, sleep with his wife to try and cover up his sin. So, so he wanted to give the man a boat in. But the man was more faithful than David. The man said, no, no, sir. My king, I cannot go home and have sex with my wife and while my, while my soldier is there in battle. That's, that's, that's a true soldier. The guy's in battle, in warfare, and I will leave the war and be buried my wife. And he didn't sleep with his wife. David said, I'm in trouble. Because the man will know his wife pregnant and not for him. You know what David did? David wrote a letter. Gave it to the man himself. Tell him, take it to the captain. And he told the, the, the captain, put that man in front of the battle where he will die. David murdered the man innocently for his wife. And that's a sin. Amber Geiger, you are in similar boat with David. When the prophet said, David, you have killed a man. David did not say, oh, well, that's not true. Or, 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 or the man had marijuana in his house. And I went there. I saw his wife. And I said, he made no excuse. People of God, God wants true confession from our soul. God wants honesty from within. Don't come and tell God about how good you are and make excuses about that person or what you find in the house or, or what you didn't find. God wants honesty in our heart. If we're not honest with God, if there's no true confession, there cannot be forgiveness. If there's no forgiveness, you cannot be redeemed. You cannot be saved. This morning, and David said, God, yes, I am guilty. Guilty like hell. And David cried. He asked God for forgiveness. God said, yes, David, I forgive you. But you must pay the consequence. What happened? Bathsheba got pregnant for David. The child died as a consequence. David's son ended up murdering his own brother, his own son. David's son ended up raping David's daughter. And David paid the consequences, but he is forgiven. This morning, for our sin, for Amber Geiger and my sin and your sin, there is forgiveness. But we must pay the consequence for our sin. So Amber Geiger, like David, you can speak the truth and say, yes, I did it. And tell us the whole truth that the, the family of both of Jean can rest in peace, can get closure. St. Lucia can get closure. The whole world is hurting. Speak the truth. Do your time if you have to. Take your, your prison. Whatever you have to face, take it. But your soul will be free. And God can use you, Amber Geiger, in prison to be a preacher in prison. God can use you, Amber Geiger, to write gospel songs. God can use you. And after that, in closing, Mr. Grant, one more minute. David, after he confessed his sins to God, he cried, God forgave him. But he had to pay the consequence, murdering his family. He had to run from his own son, wanted to kill him. But he sold us free. And today, David is in heaven. Amber Geiger, as wicked as we see you, in, in by next hour, you can confess your sins like me and everybody else. Repent from your sins. Speak the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Confess from the heart and you will be saved. And you too will be in heaven. Imagine you. And some of us, we almost hold on to our lies, our hatred, our gossip. And Amber Geiger might be in heaven. And some of us might be going to hell. In closing, what good came from evil? David, after David repented of his evil, he wrote Psalm 51. He said, have mercy to me, God, according to thy loving kindness. Brought out my transgressions. Against thee, uh, thee only have I sinned. And there is evil in thy sight. Cleanse me from blood guiltiness. This morning, Amber Geiger, John Daniel, everybody else who has sinned against the living God. You can say to God this morning, search me, O God, and know my heart today. Forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me from all blood guiltiness. And God will set you free this morning. This morning, I thank God for his word this morning. I pray for the Jeff family, for strength, for the mother and the father. I saw the father hurting in the cemetery yesterday. That, that broke my heart. But God, God is able to restore. I pray for the Jeff family. I said, Lucia was hurting the nation. I pray especially for Amber Geiger Lord this morning. That will give her a heart of repentance. That she will speak the truth. Confession, she will forgiveness and salvation this morning. Bless your name, Lord. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. You're watching... MBC. Oh, what are we afraid of?